So good afternoon. I'm so pleased. I'm so pleased that we can be here today. Um, it's great to see so many familiar faces and some faces that I just got an opportunity to learn a little bit more about and meet. Um, and I'm happy that we can kind of be here to celebrate today. Um, we launched Engage PGH as the city of Pittsburgh in 2020 in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so we can ensure that city residents had an opportunity to be informed and involved in city projects at a time when we really couldn't be together in person. Um, and now we're here almost four years later celebrating this citywide tool that has really changed how our city engages with its residents, how employees engage with each other, and how residents engage with one another. Um, and I'm happy that we can be here to celebrate that today. But before we kind of dive in, I want to acknowledge what a labor of love this platform has been. Um, and if I get a little teary eyed, no, I didn't. You guys didn't see that happen. Um, so I first want to acknowledge, uh, I want to acknowledge Andrew Dash um, and Sophie Robeson and uh, Derek Dauphin, who is not here, and everyone in the Department of City Planning who really worked so hard to get this platform off of the ground when the city needed it the most. Uh, I want to acknowledge Leah Friedman, who was with us a little bit earlier today, uh, for, uh, for, for her passion with connecting with residents and building a foundation that really into institutionalized a culture of engagement in the city and set me up for success in the two years that I managed the platform. Um, I want to acknowledge every single project manager. If you're watching online or if you're watching this later, thank you. Thank you for using this tool. Uh, thank you for meaningfully engaging with our residents, for caring that they're informed, and for wanting to make the city a better place for everyone. Um, and finally, I want to thank and acknowledge Laura Sutsui, um, who has taken the mantle of managing this platform and is doing a lot of work to drive it forward in ways that I never could and never had the capacity to do. So thank you. Um, yeah. So now, without further ado, I want to talk a little, I want to let someone else talk a little bit more about why we're here today. So we're going to hear from Aaron Zimmerman, who is the uh, executive director for IAP2 USA, uh, to talk a little bit about the award and uh, what we're doing here today. Hello, I am Aaron Zimmerman, executive director of IAP2 USA. I wish I could be there in person to celebrate with you all today, but know that I'm there in spirit. Public participation is based on the belief that those who are affected by a decision have a right to be involved in the decision-making process. IAP2 core values help define the expectations and aspirations of a public participation process. These values help guide engagement professionals in their work to support good P2. Each year, IAP2 affiliates around the world celebrate excellence in the profession through the IAP2 core value awards. The awards go to projects and organizations which best demonstrate IAP2 core values and help to raise the bar in the field of public engagement by sharing best practices and inspiring the P2 community to learn from one another. The Organization of the Year Award recognizes the application of the core values in all aspects of an organization and how they are embedded into the decision-making process. It is a true honor to recognize the City of Pittsburgh as IAP2 USA's 2023 Organization of the Year. Your organization demonstrated a sincere commitment to improve public engagement outcomes across the organization, even in the midst of massive change. The process and development of your public engagement guide, toolkit, and framework for digital engagement is a shining example of how to embed engagement within a governmental organization. And that is a, and th that approach could easily create processes and results that would stand the test of time. Congratulations to the city of Pittsburgh and thank you, Mayor Ganey, for your leadership and commitment to supporting authentic public participation. So one thing that Aaron spoke about is how we've how the city of Pittsburgh has really embedded engagement into our processes. And she's honestly very bright about that. I just want to take a minute and highlight some of the things that our many different departments are doing. So our Office of Management and Budget has been using the platform to bolster their budget engagements since 2021. This past year, they had such a great and innovative way where they had these really robust in-person engagements, and then they were directing people back to the online 
uh, the online surveys to make sure that they that residents were completely engaged in the budget process, whether they could intend attend in person or not. Uh, our Department of City Planning uh, has used the platform not only to keep residents engaged throughout the pandemic, but they also created the city's first online first neighborhood plan with the Oakland plan. Um, our Department of, Mil of Mobility and Infrastructure has found so many innovative ways to package huge initiatives into these hubs that give the most important information first to the residents and allow them to dive deeper uh, when they have the time or if they want to dive deeper. Uh, and there are so many more project managers that are doing amazing things, but uh, I'm going to get really, really excited if I keep talking about it. Um, so I want to take a minute and um, show you guys a video that we submitted for this proposal to kind of help you understand how we got here. How do we ask our communities questions about change? A 2017 Pittsburgh working group collaborated with staff to create a set of standards and goals for equitable engagement. Change in the city usually starts from the ground up with neighborhood groups, block clubs, and passionate people. This means that we always have to think of engagement strategies and tools as being dynamic, easy to use, and easy to access. Now the public can go and access parks, public space, roadway, other projects where they really get the, the opportunity to see what's going on in the city and in their neighborhoods, and they have the opportunity to provide their input and in a way that really is transparent and hopefully shows and is able to prove the importance of that input that they're providing to us. Pittsburgh's culture of engagement has grown exponentially since we started this work a few years ago. What started as a city planning effort to reach out to people online during the pandemic has really grown into this citywide platform that almost every single department in our city is using to engage with its residents. Before Engage PGH, someone might be able to attend one or two meetings over an entire planning period, but now they can be involved at every phase in a way that meets their needs and their schedule. Being able to deploy this kind of digital engagement in conjunction with other forms of public participation has allowed us to reach a significantly larger audience. Social Pinpoint offers so many options for gathering feedback and sharing information that we were able to tailor our engagement efforts to specific audiences we can be able to show what our responses were from the public and how that directly translates into policy that we write or plans that we create. Engage PGH allows us to present information in a much more interactive and dynamic way that also provides accessibility accommodations we may not be able to provide in person. Engage PGH is an incredible tool in our public engagement toolkit that allows for increased transparency and genuine community feedback. And not only that, it serves as an archive for the work that we have done, the work we're continuing to do, and the work that we hope to start in the days and weeks to come. Hello, my name is Ed Gaynor, E-D-G-A-I-N-E-Y, Mayor of the Great City of Pittsburgh. Today, we're here to talk about Engage PGA. Now more than ever, it is important that our projects, processes, and decisions are driven by equitable community engagement. My administration is committed to providing our residents with access to tools they need to thrive and Engage PGH is an incredible tool that helps us do that. I look forward to our continued work with this platform to build a Pittsburgh full of safe neighborhoods, welcoming communities, and thriving people. The city of Pittsburgh is honored to accept the IAP2 Core Values Award for Organization of the Year. We are very grateful and we thank you. I would like to welcome up Sophie Robeson, who is taking off her social pinpoint bed and putting on her IEP2 committee member hat to uh, present the award. Hi. Um, I have a really wonderful sort of job here today, which is to actually present this award to Mayor Gini, which um, has not been damaged while sitting in my living room for the last six months, maybe. <laughs> and, um, not only do I have my own background, having worked with the city of Pittsburgh for a handful of years, um, but have since moved on and um, work as an engagement professional um, in the United States and Canada now, um, including serving on a board with IAP2 um, and helping to develop their public engagement trainings, uh, which are really wonderful. So um, putting on my IAP2 board member hat, um, Mayor Gini, I'd love to invite you up to present you with your award. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank 
So I know our team is going to be mad because I'm going to switch it up. They should be used to this. <laughs> Can I have uh, Audrey, Laura, Andrew, come on up? Did I miss anybody? Uh, Sophie. Sophie. Yeah, yeah, Sophie, come on up. Come on. Did I miss anybody? I don't, I don't think so. All right. Hey. Call them out. Call them out. Toronto, do you want to come on up? Come on, yeah. I'll stand on this side. Oh, back to looking all shy and all that now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, you know, I tell people a lot of mayors may come up here and accept an award and tell you what a phenomenal job and how grateful they are. But, you know, I tell people this all the time. Why not? If you know me, you know how much I believe in engagement. That's number one. I, I come from that type of a background where engagement means everything to me. I think that the more people are engaged, the more we can reach people, the better we are. As a society, I believe that. I believe the reason why people stay in poverty is because they don't know. They're not engaged to the knowledge that can help them grow. And so I'm always aware of that and cognizant of that whenever, whatever I do, to try to make sure that information is reaching people in a real-time way that allows them to grow, not just to stay status quo. But you can't do that. You know, I, I can't stand up and act like this was my idea. I would love to accept the award on behalf of the city, and I will. But I want to thank everybody that's here right now because the, honestly that they did this work. They did this work. Audrey used to talk about this for a minute and a half. <laughs> minute and a half. Oh, step to the mic. A minute and a half and then, you know, another minute. Is that good? Another minute? I thought I could talk back then. A minute and a half. But, I mean, I, I just want to make sure that the people that did the work get the recognition. Um, because all that, I've been around a lot of elected officials, believe me, and they all like to come up here and that's fact, but we don't always recognize the people that make it happen. And so I want each one of them to sit and stand up here real quick, 30 seconds or less, because I know we got a long day, <laughs> instead of me reading all this. And I want them to tell you why I meant something, and them already share why I meant something to me. Audrey, I want you to start, and then I want everybody to share. I don't want the political talk, you know that. Oh, this is a really nice project. We did a great, I don't want none of that. <laughs> I want you to tell people why this means something to you. Okay. okay. Let's go. Okay. Well, now I might actually cry. Um, so I came to the city uh, before the before the vaccine was readily available. I moved to Pittsburgh and I didn't know anyone, right? And I got to get involved with this platform through Andrew and through Sophie um, and then later Sharonda and Marty and so many other people. And um, but we're Marty. Marty's right there. She's right there. She's not going to come up. Um, no, she is going to come up. Yay. Um, so this platform um, was really my gateway into Pittsburgh. It was my gateway into meeting people. It was my gateway into learning uh, what the city was up to. It was my gateway into learning about public process and public meetings in a way that I had never really had the experience of doing. Um, and I just got to meet so many city employees that were doing work. I got to learn so many things about planning and mobility and public works and management and budget, things that like I never thought that I would have the opportunity to learn about. And um, it's just been, like I said earlier, it's been a labor of love and I'm grateful to everyone who has helped me. I'm grateful to everyone who has recognized the work that we've done on the platform. Um, yeah, I'm just grateful. <laughs> Jump up. So I'm really happy that we're here with EngagementGH. I mean, it was really, it was started because we were in the pandemic and we had really no way to talk to people. And, you know, we are in a different place now um, and we could have just shelved this and we could have said, okay, well, you know, we're back to doing engagement as usual. And the way that, I mean, this isn't a city planning project. This is a city project now. And what was started as a city planning project is now being used by everyone. Um, you know, it is, where people are able to find information um, that they might not have been able to find information after a community meeting or after talking to a city employee. And so the way that it's blossomed has really been just really exciting to see. And, you know, we're really excited to continue to work on it and bring even more to the public car resident. Hi, everybody. Um, so full transparency, um, I came from a similarly sized city government before I joined with the city of Pittsburgh two years ago. And I, 
And I hit it off my own. Yeah, so my It's all right. I, I got on the right path. <laughs> uh, but essentially, I had not seen anything this robust and this user-friendly with this much functionality in the engagement space. And so coming here and seeing how many people are actually using this for information and how many people actually go back and forth to look at the different projects and the updates was really, really amazing to me. Um, I think the lifeblood of what we do here at the city really is community uh, voice and also what they want to see for the future. And so to be able to capture that and to be able to um, have that place where people can go and share that is is paramount to uh, good work and also to really being accountable to citizens um, and um, and moving forward um, with progress and dignity for the entire city. So this is what this means. Me. Dr. Prisovic. Yeah, if we're keeping it, you know, not political, like none of that, then um, I would just say that it enforces us to be better coordinated internally. If I know that um, another department is going to be launching a project in a neighborhood that I'm doing, you know, like we don't want to both be having things out there and not know about it. So it really has um, promoted a lot more coordination between departments and things like that. And it allows us to take projects through planning into implementation, whether that's DOMI or DPW. And, you know, that can all be continued on either the same page or can build upon the work that we do on each page. So it really, um, I think, has improved work internally as well as, um, as everyone has said, the, the work we do externally. No, I can't yeah. Yeah. Oh, Mayor. Oh, sorry. Right, so, so we just, yeah. <laughs> uh, bit of an interloper here. I'm not a city employee anymore. Um, it's uh, really beautiful to get to start to build something and to have people around you who support a crazy idea and and kind of let you try something new and creative and um, and then to walk away and see it continue to live its own life. Um, and so just really honored to even still be involved in this way and really proud of all the people on this panel and the, the work that they do. And now working with so many other cities and towns all over the, the United States and Canada, uh, what you guys are doing is awesome. <laughs> and um, the city of Pittsburgh should be really proud of itself. Um, and obviously there's room for growth, um, but, but what's happening here is awesome. And uh, it's really, really cool to see it continue to live. Why? I mean, <laughs> so, okay, a bit of a backstory. I've been with the city for six months, and Engage PGH is like what's basically told to me was like a third of the job, but it's more like 50%. <laughs> but I am so grateful because I. Didn't think I was going to be a city employee. I came to Pittsburgh to be a report, a, a journalist, I should say. And then when that did not pan out, I was like, I'm going to leave. Um, I'm not staying. And then when Rebecca Ranallo, my supervisor, reached out and was like, hey, this job is here and so on and so forth. And I ended up getting the job and talking to Audrey more and more. And I was like, this is... Uh, this means I get to keep doing the thing that I feel so passionately about, which is informing the public. And I actually get semi unfettered access to the people who are doing all the things. And I get to be like, you need to update stuff because the public wants to know. And I, and I still get to like serve people. And it just is the thing I think I meant to do, which I didn't really think was like a thing people say about their lives. Um, and so I just feel so honored. I mean, Audrey has just set this platform up for success and I get to just take it and, you know, make it bigger and brighter and more beautiful and still get to like hold her hand along the way and, and make sure like, is this still in line with this vision that you had? And how are we making sure this, this is moving forward in a way that is serving all of you? Um, so that's, so that's the answer to that. <laughs> First, I want to thank IA. IAP2. Uh, yeah, yeah, there we go. IAP2 <laughs> for this award. I really do. Thank you. But I you know, want to thank everybody behind me because I'll be honest, this city is ran in silos. 
from the government to our neighborhoods. This city is ran in silence. And we always need tools that help us break down silence. And this is a tool that definitely helps break down silence. We as a neighborhood, the reason why I ask you to tell me why you love your neighborhood, because I'm going to tell you why it's all connected at the end. Our city is a unique city. Our, our neighborhoods, if you go to any other city, our neighborhoods, their neighborhoods is about, well, I don't care if it's West Virginia, Buffalo, Cleveland, D.C. A neighborhood is usually between 10 to 20 square miles. Here they're 4.2 square miles, 3.2 square miles. Angela Williams lived with like 0.9 square miles. So we're small, but we're closely knitted. And the love that you have in one has to connect to the love that you have in another because we don't have that much of a space to be divided. What has divided us through the years is just our silence, our ability to be silent. And this helps us out a great deal to remove that. I want a united city, not a divided. And that helps when you got people and you've heard what they said. A lot of them didn't even come, didn't even grow up in the city. So they don't have the same mindset that a lot of us, such as myself, grew up in of being silent. I don't want this city to be silent for anybody. I want tools to bring us together. Love is contagious. And the more that we can pour into our neighborhoods, whether they 0.9 or 4.2 or I'm up Lincoln Limited, is 3.8 doesn't matter. I always tell people that sometimes we got to get away from the invisible lines and really look at each other for who we are as a city. And when we, the more that we do that and the more that we have tools that help us get there, then we won't be a 90 neighborhood city. We'll be one beautiful city that respects 90 neighborhoods. So I want to thank you for this whole because this means we're in the process of breaking down silos. God bless and thank Okay, so we have one more item on our agenda, and I could not think of a better way to spend International Women's Day than to uh, come together in a little fireside chat style discussion uh, with some of the incredible women that were already up here um, and who are doing this work every day. So I would like to invite up uh, Marty Battistone, uh, Principal Planner for the Department of City Planning, uh, Sharonda Watley, who is uh, our Assistant Director of Strategic Planning, uh, Laura Susui, who is our Digital Engagement Coordinator, uh, and Sophie Robeson, who is the Head of Practice for Social Pinpoint, and myself. I'm Audrey Wells. Hello, everyone. <laughs> We're going to come over here and chit-chat now. All right. We're also, we would like this to be an intimate fireside chat, so if anyone wants to move up, uh, yeah, please feel free. The dogs you spread out. Stop me. It's not your thing. So it's just in the end. That's the I did it. No, no, I tend to count. I pulled the box down for that. How can I put this back? This working? Yes, it is. Hello. Can you guys? Yes, this is all working. And then we'll we'll share. Okay. So we have we Jax. Thank you so much for coming into the wow. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, Sophie. So let's start with you. So uh, you, like you said, have been with the city for, you were with the city before we had Engage PGH. So can you tell us a little bit about what engagement looked like in the city of Pittsburgh before we uh, developed this platform? Um, and what the Get to, yeah, here we go. Hello? Okay. Hello. <laughs> um, and Marty is a colleague from a colleague who can also speak to this, and I think really wonderfully. Um, the city of Pittsburgh has always given space to be very creative with public engagement, which is a really fun spot to be in. Um, and uh, the in-person public engagement that we were doing prior um, had a real emphasis on uh, trying to find creative ways to listen um, and think about uh, how we were using the feedback that we were collecting um, I think there's a, a large emphasis when you're designing public engagements on just being present um, and creating space for people to share ideas. Um, and that one of the things that I got to observe in sort of the build up to COVID as we were creating the, the public engagement guide was uh, taking a step back and saying, oh, wow, we have people all over the city doing public engagement 
and none of them are trained in public engagement. Um, and they're all doing something in their own way and they're all champions in that way. And they've all found different strategies to be creative and to be successful. How could we bring all those voices together? And so that was kind of what was culminating when COVID changed sort of that landscape. Um, and I think that was that was really exciting to see was the city staff starting to talk to each other about their engagement strategies and kind of professionalize in that way. Yeah. So you mentioned so you mentioned the public engagement guide, Marty. I'm going to have you answer this question too. Um, but so you mentioned the public engagement guide. Could you tell us a little bit about like what that is and kind of how you used what you were just talking about this idea of all of these people championing in different areas to kind of codify into this public engagement guide and what that process was like for you? Yeah. Um, so we started in 2017, looking for Andrew to help me remember the years. Thank you. Um, and uh, um, we were working on some very large scale planning projects. Uh, and Pittsburgh's obviously a city experiencing a lot of change um, and kind of realized by looking at peers around the United States that before we could ask questions about change, we first had to ask how people wanted to be asked those questions. Um, because it's a big question to ask. And uh, it's easy to do that, I think, in a way that's not very respectful. Um, and so we embarked on this process of uh, creating what was the public engagement working group. And it was a group of um, 40 members uh, of, of uh, 40 city residents from all over and, and representing a lot of different um, communities and perspectives. So really, really cool group. Um, and they met four or five times and uh, we organized this process to get their feedback on how they wanted to be asked questions by the city um, and then created a, a bit of a guidebook. Um, and what was cool was that as that process went on to which Andrew mentions that he was started as a planning project and grew to be a city project, um, that we started talking to employees in other departments and they're like, hold on, I want this too. <laughs> Um, and so we embarked on a bit of an effort to um, sort of not generalize it, but grow it. Yeah. Um, and that was really exciting. We got to um, do focus groups with staff in lots of different departments and kind of learn how they were doing engagement and what struggles they were running into and where I think the like where a public meeting goes wrong. Right. Um, and how do you build respect and trust with the public? Um, when you're doing these things while simultaneously giving your staff enough support. Um, and so that was the, the public engagement guide. It was uh, accepted by planning commission in 2019, I think in the fall. So about six months later was when uh, kind of all of the guidelines we put in there for how to do public engagement. We couldn't use it. <laughs> yeah. And so that was kind of the, the premise. Well, cool. okay. Now, Marty, we're going to shift it over to you because you're the other, you're the other kind of OG planning person. She's calling me old. I'm not. I'm not calling Marty old for the record. Um, so you, can you tell us a little bit, answer that same question. So what did engagement look like for you before, uh, before the pandemic? And then also you are one of our top users on Engage PGH. Um, that's a huge undertaking. Marty spends a lot of time on the platform doing a lot of our parks planning. You should check out some of her projects. They're awesome. Um, and so could you tell us about, so in addition to talking about what it looked like, uh, what is it, so how was it before? How was that shift? And then what is it like now? And what are some of your favorite projects that you're working on? And I want this to be really interactive. So I might like ask some questions of my own at the end. Yeah. Um, but so basically Sophie and I did, um, she was the neighborhood planner, um, working in the West end. And so one of the biggest projects I had pre COVID was the Sheridan park master plan. Um, I don't know how many of you are, have ever been to Sheridan park. It's this like amazing gem. It's sort of in a, a bowl. Um, and so even a lot of residents we found didn't really even know it was there, or, um, you know, weren't utilizing it. And so it was. Um, really important to us to ensure that the plan reflected what residents would actually use, how they were getting to the park currently, how that could be improved. And so that engagement, while very robust, we got a lot of great attendance. It was pretty much one public meeting at the Healthy Active Living Center every, you know, three or four months for each phase of the park plan. And if you 
couldn't make it from, you know, 5 to 7 p.m. on that one day, uh, you know, there wasn't really a great mechanism unless you, you know, kind of hunted down one of our emails um, to provide feedback that way. You know, it really, that's sort of how, that was the standard. That was how we were doing engagement. Um, and it was great at the time. You know, I felt really good about it. Um, and, but now looking back, it's, you know, there are just like a range of inequalities and obstacles to people being able to participate that way. And so now um, when we do park plans or really anything, we still try to ensure that there is, you know, some element of in-person engagement. Uh, we know that there's uh, some barriers to technology, not as many, I think, as I originally would have assumed um, about having, you know, sort of an online platform. But a lot of it is is a hybrid. We try to make sure that the things that are being captured on the website can be sort of replicated in person and vice versa. So I think it really pushes us to ensure that the materials we're putting out, whether it's a plan diagram, um, can be ingested and explained with without any additional context. You know, if I'm not there in person to walk someone through a process or feedback, you know, that all needs to be pretty self-explanatory um, on the website. And so um, that has been, I think, one of the biggest shifts in how we do engagement now and, um, you know, the way that we create materials. Um, so I don't know if um, any of you have, like, we really try to ensure that when we're working in specific neighborhoods, we learn, you know, what's the most effective way to reach those residents. So I don't know if any of you have thoughts about, like, your specific neighborhoods and ways that might be unique to you in terms of how you engage um, with the people that you represent. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to answer, but I just, you know, that's what we try to find is basically the beginning of every process is what are the places where we can be publicizing the website or public meetings? What are the spaces um, that people are already going to um, and just trying to jump in to, to kind of things that are already happening versus creating standalone meetings? We know everyone is meeting out. Um, so I think that that also has been a big shift. I think, Marty, you make like a you make a really good point about this idea of using an online engagement platform like Engage to, in a way that we can replicate it in person, right? And so this one I'm going to direct at you, Sharonda. Um, so as we are launching into this comprehensive planning process, right, you have experience from your city in Ohio that we're not going to name unless you want to, um, but you have experience with comprehensive planning, right? And you were doing that comprehensive planning. I think pre-COVID from what I understand. And so how, like, did you guys have that kind of engagement, that online engagement aspect? And what was it like coming from a city of a similar size into a city that had such a similar, or had such a robust digital engagement platform when you came in? No, that's a, that's a really, really great question. Uh, we did have um, sort of the, the social media and an online engagement platform. It was not as robust, and as a matter of fact, as I'm thinking about it, it was probably outdated even then for that time, um, even before COVID. Um, and so um, having something like Engage PGH um, and having this sort of platform and not only having it um, accessible um, on a, sort of the traditional sort of computer, but also um, what it looks like on mobile devices and tablets. Um, so we know that um, communities have been digitally redlined across the entire country. And so while folks may not have access to um, stable an affordable internet and things like that, they do have access to um, sort of a smartphone. And so that digital inf interface and, and, and the ease in which they're able to use it even on something like a, a personal cellular for cell phone device is really key so that people can actually provide their input um, and give feedback on projects that are impacting their neighborhoods um, on their own time and on their own devices, um, regardless of having to go to a community meeting or um, having um, sort of at home so, uh, uh, internet service. Um, and then also just thinking about um, something that my my young staff who do public engagement, they call it, uh, it's a new term to me, digital. So Marty had talked about, uh, you know, having materials that translate both online, but also in person and what that looks like and what that feels like is really, is really key. Um, and so I totally appreciate, you know, technology and a platform like this, but also having um, sort of, um, that, that coordination of in, in person and also digital is really, is really, really important. Um, even as we start to think about uh, the comprehensive plan and um, how we wanna engage people in the different ways that we wanna provide avenues and options for people to 
um, um, give their feedback and see themselves in, in that plan for the city. What's that word? Digital. F I G I T. Okay, I didn't know this. All right, yeah. You're going to have to ask my young to death. <laughs> we have like a follow up yeah. panel just to talk about what digital means. Digital. Um, I think, Geronda, you bring up a really great point, though. So I think one thing that we hear a lot when we're talking about this idea of digital engagement is the digital divide, right? There are a lot of people who don't have ready access to internet. Who don't have uh, who don't have the digital literacy to be able to kind of interact um, in a digital platform. So I think a question that maybe all of us can kind of think through, and whoever wants to go first can jump in. But uh, how do we how do we address that? How do we how do we address the digital divide? How do we talk about this idea of online engagement and everybody moving to this online first perspective? How do we address the digital divide in that space? Okay. Anyone out here? Yeah, sure. Yeah, they have heard that anybody. I'm going to block. But yeah, not like that. It's not like three. I'm almost going to do the last week. Um, I think that anybody should be able to go to their public library, their senior center, um, any other public spaces that are, if even the the, the warm shelters anywhere and be able to very easily log on, that you should not have to make a password, that you have to remember or carry with you, that you should not have to struggle to find what this is. And I don't know how you would get that information out. You, you know, you're not going to have it as a tab saved on every computer at the city, but, but there should really be an easy way. Like, I'm logged in all the time because I have a, a device that's that's just mine. Right. Um, I don't have to remember my password. I have a smartphone that saves all my pass keys and it's very easy for me. And um, and, and that would be really great for, for people to be able to access those things wherever they're getting their internet connection. Sure. Go ahead. Can, can I just say, so uh, Oakland was the test neighborhood, I think, where Engage PGH has indeed, indeed, yeah. Uh, and it was sort of uh, because things sort of fell apart uh, that we really started to rely on it uh, as a platform. And on the, what was remarkable was the learning experience it provided to us about how many people we had inadvertently been leaving out of our engagement. Um, but then, alternatively, as a result of relying so heavily on Engage PGH, there were populations that we could not reach throughout the Oakland land process. Um, and those are people who have, you know, no specific digital uh, access and people who didn't auto already know to come looking. Um, so one of the things that we struggle with a lot in Oakland is that the, the public library or the places like that are not specifically neighborhood serving. Like we have the CLP in Maine. Like you come to Oakland for the things that are serving the city or the region and very few spaces that are actually there to serve the people who live in Oakland. And so it's not as obvious that you would necessarily go to look for your neighborhood, things that are happening in your backyard, in one of the spaces that it sort of just opened people um, in the way that things are. So um, one of the things that we learned about engagement as a result is that you can't just rely on the one platform. Sure. Not only can we not just stick our shingle out and say we're having a public meeting, not just only can we not like email our list, you know, because there's lots of people who are like, why do you email? Uh, <laughs> like we have started a paper newsletter where we summarize some of the things that are happening, you know, like, you know, check this out, call these people, do this, this is happening. Uh, and I'm, I'm working on trying to expand that outreach. Um, but at some point, we're going to have to get back to door knocking, which is what we did way back in the day. Um, Oakland is large and it's a very challenging thing for us to do, but you, because the population turns over so fast, it is a constant battle to reintroduce and to reincorporate and reconnect. And we never, we never get a chance to stop. Like, you know, other neighborhoods where everybody knows each other, there's, there's some of that in Oakland, so if you can attest, right, but then and there's also vast quantities of it where people arrived literally yesterday and they're going to be gone next week. So um, it's, it, that's, that's part of our challenge. Yeah. But can I just say, we also really appreciate the archival quality that the thing represents. 
Because then, you know, even for months or years or whatever afterwards, we can say, here's where that project is. And here, look, see, we made those comments in 2019. Uh, uh, and like, it's, it's preserved, but it's also not enough. So the city was going to just keep Oakland plan as an engage thing. If you don't know about it, you're never going to be able to, like, there, there does need to be a paper copy. <laughs> the platform will at some point be inaccessible and it, in its later versions will not allow you to access the information that was there. It's going to be a long challenge to make something archival that is meant to be so flexible and so responsive and mutable. Um, so some kind of permanent record <laughs> is very helpful, some kind of indexing process, right, to keep people connected to what things were. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I just want to say, as somebody who has seen the back end of how some of this stuff works, um, the way that the platform allows us to host an in-person meeting, run the platform, run some of the vision boards or some of the mapping exercises with the people that are able to be there with us in person and tandem at the same time, live streaming through Zoom or whatever, running that with people at home. All at the same time, people can see what other people are doing. People can see everything in real time. It's all in the same place, which is great for data capturing afterwards. Um, which is one of the main issues that we would run into with recording public comments and recording digital comments and pushing those together at the end to come up with a seamless summary of what people actually told us. Um, and I think this platform does a really good job of capturing that. And it does a really good job of exploiting that data in a way that we can then add those public comments to. Um, so not that I have anything really to instruct us to tell you guys, but more of just a pat on the back of saying, um, so far, so good. I think it's working really well. There's obviously always going to be barriers to overcome and new ways to do things and always thinking of how we can do better and always do better. But so far, I think that it had worked out really, really well. It was occurring to me, and maybe Sharonda, we can talk about this, um, that this would be a really great way to think about its future development or growth or usefulness to kind of even the playing field across different neighborhood organizations that may or may not have the capacity to host their own website or like actually, you know, communicate to a broader audience about what kinds of things they have been going on. Um, would it be kind of cool if there was like a no neighborhood section where you can become one of those back end uh, users to be able to keep that kind of stuff in one place where people all know, look for it. It's easier to, we've talked about this too, uh, it's easier to send people to one spot uh, all the time than it is to reinvent all the time. I think that's a great segue. Wow, funny you should mention yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> <Is> that... Yeah. <laughs> so, no. <laughs> so yeah, I we currently do have partners, some partners like the Pittsburgh Parks Conservancy, who um, use Engage PGH sort of in tandem with um, city staff to update the public on various projects and, you know, sort of present that. But another thing that we've been working on also is creating, um, couldn't come up with a better name for it, So, but a neighborhood services hub where we can try to, um, you know, really centralize that list of all of the public engagement meetings that are coming up. So it's not just I'm interested in this particular bridge, so I'm going to look at this bridge's page, but more like, I'm kind of interested in just being more involved. Let me see what meetings are coming up. Um, a better place for you to see where your engagement coordinator, like who your engagement coordinator is. I know many of you were invited by them, but maybe, I don't know, maybe you have a resident who's like, I just came here, but I actually don't live in this neighborhood. And you could tell them who that is. Um, and, and also just kind of like be a little for active and dynamic about updating when things are happening um and where rather um and i'm hoping that we will come up with some sort of way to make that a little more collaborative with groups and posting about their meetings i'm not sure what that will look like so stay tuned on that so you're talking about some of the updates that you're planning on making at some and first of all let me give laura some 
some kudos because Laura Laura jumped in and has really has really started to kind of rethink how we're utilizing the platform, right? She's created this neighborhood services hub. She's trying to make sure that all of this information is centralized. Um, so along that vein, um, one of the things, one of the pieces of feedback that we'll sometimes get is that people people will go and look at the Oakland plan, for example, that's an implementation or they'll look at a plan that's, you know, it says that it's still a project design, but we're well into construction. So can you talk to us a little bit about, you know, in this new age of NDH PGH, what does that what does that process for updating look like? And like what is the what is gonna what is that gonna look like for us moving forward? Yeah, I guess I'll start this with a question of like, how many of you have looked at an engage page and been like, this is not updated? <laughs> Everybody raise your hand. <laughs> I know, and I'm sorry. <laughs> Is how I will start. You have to acknowledge the problem. Um, so yeah, that's one of the things that I am working on as like the incomer. There's only so long I can say I'm new. I don't know, um, but I do know, and I'm working on a cadence of a like regularly updating pages that maybe don't have super active updates. So we moved out of the phase of really actively accepting feedback, and now we're kind of just in the construction phase but making sure that it, we didn't forget about this page and if there are comments rolling in, we are still looking at them. And so I'm, I'm in the process of basically making sure that I touch every single page on some regular cadence, not once a year, not every six months, but maybe every three months or something more reasonable. And also just making sure I create some agreements between myself and the project managers that they touch the pages and make sure they're up to date because my job is not herding cats, it's running this website. So uh, I don't just wanna be emailing them saying, please tell me what is happening. Um, so that's something that I am working on and you know, would love to make sort of like a promise to you all that I can say in a year, it's we've got a more regular schedule that that's going on instead of someone just saying, this is so outdated like, and and frankly, like that's a, that's a breakage of trust. Like I understand and I, Agree. So um, one of the things that I'm working on with my colleagues, Jan Rather, who just snuck in, hi Jan, um, and Matt, who's on the neighborhood services team, Matt Clink is our analyst, is creating a user survey that I will send to all of you um, because I want to know what you like about the site, what's useful and what's not working for you because also this is like being that I'm like fresh blood, I am really interested also in just leaning into what's working and either re or or whatever moving away from what's not um and getting your like honest feedback um because i i am new and i don't have a strong attachment to anything yet so my feelings aren't hurt yet yet um so yes sophie was is going to add in something before i ask our final question i was gonna add i think um like looking at the larger engagement context, especially in the greater United States, um, most major cities uh, don't have engagement professionals on staff. And they have communications professionals, and then they have subject matter experts like planners, and landscape architects, and engineers. Um, and when you look at that landscape um, across the US, it's been changing in the last few years. And there's been an acknowledgement um, that the engagement strategies have been extremely decentralized across cities um, because there's no one to kind of corral it and create some standards and consistency. Um, the city of Pittsburgh tackled this with the approach of saying, hey, this is decentralized. That's a problem we're going to fix later, right? Um, we have created this guide, so we're giving staff some idea of how we want them to think. Um, but we need action now. And so this ended up being a system that allowed that work to continue in a decentralized way. And Flora, right, is an outcome of saying, okay, hey, we have created a big piece of wood here. Um, we need to start bringing it together and creating, you know, some real resources and professionalizing that. Um, and so what you're seeing really actively right now on not just in the Age, but on, in terms of the city's entire engagement approach is an effort to really invest in making sure that residents are having a positive experience. Um, with engagement, the 
most important tenet from a best practice perspective is that every interaction has to build trust. Um, and when you're talking about equity in particular, right, you're asking the, a, a resident, a member of the public, to give you a little bit of trust by answering the question that you need the answer to. Um, and seeing the city investing this way in a step is an effort to continue building that trust. And so just you have a hard job. Yeah, and I, I also want to say, like, I know we're sitting up here, but we're, like, preaching to the choir because you all who are, you know, in the communities are literally the professionals. And so, like, so, like, I really mean it when I say, like, please be, please give me your feedback because, uh, and to Sophie's point, like, I come from a journalism background and it is, the industry is both deteriorating and also trying to move into doing more engagement because I think that the people who have been running these institutions for forever and ever are realizing that it is not centering the communities who matter them or the communities who have been most disadvantaged yeah underinvested the entire time and so you know I, I am so appreciative that like we're sitting here because yeah Pittsburgh is like putting its money where its mouth is for trying to do this and like I also am saying like seriously please like I want to hear it because Otherwise, it doesn't mean anything. Otherwise, yeah, it, it breaks that trust. And it means that you're not going to tell anyone to go to engage PGH because it's not accurate and it's not helpful. And that's not the point. And I think just to kind of build on this work that we're doing with Engage PGH, our neighborhood services team is doing so much work. They are out in your neighborhoods every like every week. They're going to your public meetings. They're knocking on doors. They're, you know, planning events in high extreme need neighborhoods. So we see you and we hear you and we understand that there have been large areas of this city that have been disinvested in and we're working on fixing. It's not going to happen tomorrow. It's not going to happen next week, but we are trying, right? So like Laura said, please give us your feedback. Your feedback is, is what drives us. Your feedback is what gives us the direction that we need to go in. It kind of tells us where our, our investments need to go. We want to hear from you and just know that we see you and we're working on it. Um, so we're nearing the end of our time. So I want to end us on I want to end us on a positive note. So I want to I want to kind of talk. I want to go down the line and I want to talk about um, what's something that you're most excited about, either with the Engage PGH platform itself or with civic engagement in Pittsburgh, uh, or just whatever you're most excited about when the work that you're doing. Um, Sharonda, we'll start down there with you. I think I'm most excited about just really having a deep conversation with people across the city. And so however we do that, however we manage that is um, something that I'm really, really interested in. So. Uh, I'm most excited about seeing our park plans be moved um, into being that page being managed by the Department of Public Works, which means it is going into design and construction and things being built and just seeing that all come to life both in real life and on the page. Um, I'm excited about seeing the city of Pittsburgh kind of take its place on a national stage with this work um, and uh, seeing the the opportunity to influence the space writ large um, is is really cool um, and and acknowledging the great work and effort that's being done here, not just by the city but also by the community members. Yes. Oh, that's a bad Um so I don't know if it was clear from my little diatribe up there earlier, but like I'm not originally from Pittsburgh, and so I'm most excited about going out to the neighborhoods with the coordinators so that I can like supplement the engaged PGH pages and projects and also the newsletter. Subscribe, please. Um and and just good Pittsburgh. What's good Pittsburgh? And and learning what's going on in your neighborhoods and just like being there for a second with you for longer than a second and and just being like okay like how do we capture this on the page and then make sure we're responding um in whatever way that's going to look like and documenting that because that's how things start to move you document it and you say look at what we did or what didn't happen or whatever and then you start moving the needle somehow some way um, this is all, as I've said, like 5,000 times, very new to me, but luckily I'm optimistic. So let's do it. 
Uh, I think the thing I'm most excited about is I'm excited to just continue to watch this grow. I think so. We put it really eloquently that it's really lovely to see something that you had such a hand in, right? And it it's great to see it be successful while you're doing that work, but it's also really lovely to take a step back and to watch it continue to grow. And um, I'm really I'm really excited about some of the institutionalizing that Laura is doing. Uh, that's things that I, I desperately wanted to do for years and I just couldn't. And Laura is making it happen. And Laura is making it happen in a way that's involving the public. Our neighborhood services team is leveraging Engage PGH in a way that I never thought it could ever be leveraged. We're getting recognitions that I didn't even think were on our radar. So I'm really excited to see the people who are on the ground doing the work. I'm really excited to continue working with all of you. Um, and as the mayor would say, let's go get it. <laughs> thank you all. Yeah, thank you so much for coming. Thank you.